chapter 8, and uh, we're going to go uh, verses 1 through 10 here. Let's read this together. It says, Now the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the holy places, in the true tent that the Lord set up, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Thus it is necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. Now if we were on earth, we would not be, a, or if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly thing. So what does the earthly priest serve as? The earthly priest serves as a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, See that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. But as it is, the Messiah has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old, as the covenant that he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises." So, Vera, I think we'll stop right there. I think you get uh, the point that we were trying to make here. Again, these are copies of things that are in heaven. And so, once again, by creating these things on earth that are a copy of the heavenly things, Yahovah was helping man to understand how things needed to be if he was indeed going to be granted salvation, which would lead him back to the tree of life that he had originally been banned from in the garden. Man first had to learn how to become a citizen of our Messiah's coming kingdom before he could enter our Messiah's coming kingdom. And once again, I want us to notice what a new what the new covenant was all about, because this is very, very important. Let's continue on here. It says, But as it is, the Messiah has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old, as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the old covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I showed no concern for them, declares Yahuwah. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord, Yahovah. He says, I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts, and I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. Okay? So now, again, this is in the book of Hebrews. Now, you can read this exact same scripture if you turn to Jeremiah chapter 31. You'll see the exact same thing. This is what the new covenant is all about. The new covenant has absolutely nothing to do with nailing all of God's laws to a cross or being once saved, always saved, so that do as thou wilt is now the whole of the law. And it has nothing to do with dispensational grace or a two-house theory or a Gentile church that replaces the Jews or anything else other than the laws of Yahovah being written in the hearts and in the minds of Yahovah's people. That's what the new covenant is all about, my friends. That's what the blood of our Messiah rang in. And that's what the truth of Scripture tells us in both the Old and the New Testaments. And it's tectonically important for us to get that, and especially for anybody who might be listening to us uh, that is visiting with us today. Extremely important. So if you want to know what the New Covenant is all about, turn to Hebrews chapter 8, and you can find it in the New Testament. You can uh, also find it in Jeremiah chapter 31 in the uh, what many people call the Old Testament. Uh, and you can find it all throughout the Bible. Our Messiah was sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel specifically, and he tells us that in the book of Matthew. Uh, so there's a lot to know there. We won't get into all of that right now, but I want us to understand that. 